quick announcements one I got these really cool necklaces from um, the Renaissance Fair in Vegas and she titled them as dragon bubbles and I just thought that was a really cool term obviously it's not really dragon bubbles but they are little in fact bubbles inside of this necklace and they're so cute so I'm going to be doing these for a giveaway for you guys um, for next week's giveaway but there will be obviously more than one once again like I said I am splitting up all of the giveaways from Zach's mom to basically the end of this month because October is our month for paranormal right Second announcement, I know that I've had some of you messaging like if I'm still wanting to do my book, like what's going on with that. Yes, I have been, like I finally had time to really sit down. So I've been kind of re-editing a chapter a night. So I'm hoping that once I get done with this final edit, I will be able to um, actually publish it as an ebook. My first book will be Ghost Girl Diaries Volume 1. All of those volumes, because I have no idea how many I'm going to write, uh, will be paranormal related. The very first book will start out a little bit generic, a little bit basic, just so that I can build onto it over time. And then after that one is published, I will do a personal book on, uh, you know, like my life. I know a lot of you are like, you don't share a lot of your personal life with us. When are you going to do that? So I will, I will share a lot more in depth of my life in that book, but expect the, the first one that comes out to be all paranormal related. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. You guys have been dying for me to review all of the new Ghost Adventures episodes. I'm super behind on doing it, which is why I thought let's bump up the next few weeks to do, you know, two uploads a weekend. In fact, I'm going to hopefully get these uploaded a little bit early this week. It's going to be Wolf Creek, Oregon, and this is the Golden Ghost Town, if you guys remember. So this is where they thought there was like a witchy forest. They weren't sure. It was like some secret cult out in the woods. Um, there was a bishop that was involved and they weren't sure if the little stick men that they were finding like all over the forest and in these abandoned buildings that Gak got to investigate, they weren't sure if those were like demonic possessed dolls or if they were like summoning in demons from somewhere. So like normal, let's talk about this and break it apart a little bit because I feel like there were some elements that needed to be explained more and I feel like we can we need to go into depth more on if it's actually like a cult living in the woods. So Zach does have these guests on to talk with them regarding their experiences like these investigators and the general stores where the dolls are hanging and all of a sudden the girls like are talking to Zach and he's like, I want you to leave. I want you to get out. And he's got this like sinister smile, which really creeped me out. Whether it was real or not, it creeped me out. I don't suspect it's not real. I'm just saying I found it very creepy. So then they talk about that there is possibly a hundred witches or more that are living in this forest conjuring things and they kind of have no communication with the outside world. They also start exploring before the investigation that there's possible vortexes in Oregon and they're talking about these things called ley lines and within the ley lines there's all these strange things like they used a broom or a mop to stand up straight by itself believing it was in the vortex of the ley line. Um, the girl stood on one side of Erin and moved to the other and the land was perfectly flat and somehow she became taller. 
No one really knows how or why. I just want to see inevitable proof that we think something outer worldly is going on here. So all we really get about the ley lines is there's some sort of function within these ley lines that give off electromagnetic energy, which we know as investigators, EMFs are everything to us, right? Like EMFs make up everything that we need as investigators. So honestly, the first question that I had was, how is a ley line detected? I'm kind of familiar with them, but I, I just wanted to get a little bit more familiar with them. And I thought I would share that information with you guys so that we're all on the same page of understanding why is this investigation surrounded by ley lines? What's the big deal about them? Ley lines are ancient formations that are claimed to have been placed by maybe ancestors, maybe people from Egypt. There have been significant evidence that has been captured as far as electromagnetic field readings in perfect lines going to things like Stonehenge and going towards large items like the pyramids in Egypt. So if you're thinking about this, if you think about Stonehenge and the pyramids, you're immediately going to go, okay, we're gonna talk about aliens, right? They are paths and routes that are supposedly meant to be spiritual significant, and they've also been known to be linked to UFOs as almost like a directional map for UFOs when they come to visit planet Earth. It is a hypothesis. Obviously, there has been evidence taken of readings on these ley lines where it's literally a significant ley line of a mile or less or sometimes bigger of an exact directional EMF reading in one way, but they're unexplainable. They're not really they're not man-made. No one really knows how they got there. There's multiple maps on the internet, if you Google it, that will show like all these different ley lines everywhere. I was wondering if there was some sort of a piece of construction equipment or, or something in physics, other than the tools that we use, that could indefinitely detect a ley line. There's nothing that really can other than field work of gathering data that has been collected for these ley lines. So data has been collected. This isn't completely made up, but it's not a man-made thing. So no one really knows how they got there to begin with. If you do pull it back even further to like the times of Greece or in Egypt when oracles, which back then that would have been known as a psychic, there were very few because obviously the population on earth was low and oracles would claim that there were even ley lines in that time. Like there have been writings found in ancient times of ley lines. So this isn't like a first discovery, like, oh, we just discovered this. No, this has been around forever, basically. It's spiritual paranormal phenomena is the only way I can explain it as. Can I just say that that blue jay that dumped a load on Zach's shoulder couldn't have been like more perfect timing. Like <laughs> I love how, you know, like I love how Zach can be so serious on camera and he's really trying to get it across to you that this is what's happening and, and you have to be here to feel the energy. And all of a sudden, bloop, this like bird just poops right on his shoulder. So I found that fascinating that maybe the bird was like, man, don't take yourself so serious all the time. Like, why don't you laugh once in a while, bro? And by the way, why did he leave the poo on his shoulder? Because like you see him walking around with the guide and with Aaron after that, and he still has the poo on his shoulder. I just didn't know, like maybe he didn't want to smear it. Um, but surely we've all thought of some innovative ways where you can get some bird poo off your shoulder rather than let it harden on your shoulder. The guide was obviously extremely knowledgeable about ley lines. I wish they would have given her a little bit more time to talk about it so that we could have understood more as an audience of what is really going on there. But she did give us like the golf ball. They showed the golf ball that went with like this gravitational pull, which was really strange. They showed the broom. So then they automatically go to, are the witches in the camp living here? 
here because there is ley lines and it's causing better frequencies of EMF, which possibly is making their spells and conjuring stronger. It sounds like they went and had either a producer or a production assistant go out into the woods and found the witches and they denied wanting to do an interview with Ghost Adventures, which is very interesting. But if you're thinking, if you think about this on a really, if you think about this on a reality based level, if there's a bunch of people living in the woods and it's literally the middle of nowhere, they're not gonna have television anyways. They're probably not gonna have smartphones. How are you gonna charge it? I mean, there could be a generator, but they're not really going to care who Ghost Adventures is. Why do I need money? I live out in the middle of nowhere. We're self-sufficient. We live like the village. So why do I need to do an interview with you? So I found that really interesting. When they started talking about people living in the woods, the very first thing my mind went to wasn't witchcraft, it wasn't witches, but it was druids. Druids are so secretive, they're even more secretive than shamanism, like in my background of being Cherokee and shamans in Native American culture, druids are like very hush-hush. There is like nothing hardly written on a real druid. They're like mystical creatures that don't exist, but there is actual druidism. I believe that it originated in either Ireland or Scotland. I could be wrong, but that's really all I have read about being a druid. Basically, in order to be a druid, from what I have read, they are almost sworn to secrecy. Like they believe that if they ever talk about their heritage or culture or practices, which is similar to a mystical, magical practice that um, they will be shunned and possibly killed for exposing the secrets of Druidism. The earliest writings that have been found and detected on being a Druid were traced all the way back to Julius Caesar. So this isn't something that has just been around, but it sounds to me like certain cultures like Scotland and Ireland adopted the culture more than other areas of the earth. What do Druids believe? So once again, very little that I could find on Druidism. They believe in an immortal soul, not a vampire and not reincarnation. So when I say immortal soul, it isn't that they drink blood to live. It's not a werewolf where they transform. It's not reincarnation where they die and move on um, and they're reborn through another body. We're talking about they live and live and live till 60, 90, whatever, and when that body is decaying and dying, they will use someone else from their clan to be the new vessel which they will teleport to. How, I don't know, don't ask me, I'm not a druid. I tried to find some. Couldn't find anybody to call. Thought about giving Amy Allen a call to see if she knew a druid, but I assumed she was gonna say no. I want to call this a human sacrifice, but it's not exactly that. It is somehow, there are few druids that live within the clan of maybe a hundred people, and the majority of the people in the clan worship the druids as almost, I wanna say a god, but it's not really a god. It, it might be looked at more as like, um, like a Buddha figure or you know, some, it's still like the hierarchy of the chain is the druids of the group. They live in this cult. I don't wanna even say cult. Is it a cult? I don't know. I mean, we don't talk to druids, we don't know. But they live in this group amongst themselves, completely closed off to the outside world with the understanding that if something happens to the druid or druids and they are going to die with their vessel, they will need to sacrifice someone else for that soul or that druid to transfer into that vessel. They don't kill the person, obviously. Like they can't sacrifice the person or the body because then they wouldn't have a vessel to transfer into. So do they kick the soul out and then the soul goes to heaven or whatever or crosses over? I have no idea, you guys, like, I don't know. If you're a druid and you're watching this, 
please give me, you know, hook me up with some, some info on my email. I'll keep it quiet. I won't tell anybody it was you. I would just like to know about Druidism a little bit more. So anyway, do I think it's witches and witchcraft covens in the forest? I mean, it could be, but it sounds to me more like that it more likely to be some sort of druidism going on. And by the way, they're extremely like spiritual, holy. It's almost like a cross between Hinduism and shamanism with Native Americans. So, you know, and another thing, there was a mistake that was made again in Ghost Adventures. Um, I think a, a, some sort of a word came out, a sentence came out with Zach. He said, are they practicing Wicca? Are they conjuring demons in the forest? Okay. Please don't make me explain this again, and I won't because it's boring. But remember, Wicca is a religion. Wiccas do not perform summoning demons. That is against the religion of a Wicca. Witches do. Witches do summon demons. Every single Wicca is a witch, but not every witch is a Wicca. So let's just try to keep that in mind again because if we're keeping this straight it's not nice to bash you know the Wiccan religion because like they are all about like outdoors and greens and trees and the sun and the moon and usually good or they wouldn't be Wicca so anyway I just I have to clarify that and if you don't know what I'm talking about find my old video about Wicca versus witchcraft. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the investigation. So I first saw the thermal image of the body that walked by behind like where the general store was and all of the guys were in the tent. They hadn't even gone out to investigate yet. And I was like, man, like two things. First of all, that does not look like an apparition just because the th I've seen so many thermal images. Like I have the thermo cam. I was like, that is not an apparition. Like, you know the difference between an apparition versus a real person. And I was like, mm, I don't know. I'm not really convinced with that. That piece of evidence could be a little sketch on the edge. But then on the other side, I'm like, what if there is someone living in the woods? And what if they know something's going on with this investigation? And what if they're out there with like a hacksaw? waiting for one of Ghost Adventures to come out there. So honestly, I'm just gonna say one thing I don't like, I'm not saying I won't do it, but one thing I don't like is outdoor investigations. And that is exactly why. I did an outdoor investigation once um, in Colorado Springs. There were a lot of people that had gone up to this creepy cave that was very haunted. They were drinking, they were partying, and it was all fun and games until we heard that they had guns and they were shooting bullets off in this like giant cave. First of all, it could ricochet and cause some sort of shrapnel to hit someone. Second of all, the cave was known to have collapsed three times. That's the last thing you need is to like keep shooting it with immense power to cause it to collapse while there's like a hundred people inside. So we got really threatened on this investigation. It was so scary. Um, one of my crew members ended up pretending like he knew one of the drunk guys and then they were like, oh cool, come party with us. We were like, Phew. we almost like died out there. Outdoor investigations are serious. Apparitions are scary, but it's even scarier when you're running into someone that really probably shouldn't be there. Aaron and Billy are sent basically to the general store to investigate, not ghosts, but to make sure no one is sitting inside of the store because they have concerns maybe it went into that building. And Aaron gets this horrible pain where like he can't even function. And I'm shocked he even goes to investigate. Like he's such a trooper. I feel like he still does get scared, but he really pushes through in the name of evidence. And I just love that about Aaron. Like even if he's being physically affected, even if he's scared someone's in there, he wants to know what's going on. Like it's beyond, you know, our realm of answers. So instead of running, let's get, let's get what's going on here. Let's find out what's happening. I will say though, the demon EVP freaked me out quite a bit. My only concern was why the stick dolls were hanging from the ceiling. There were a couple other scenes where Zach had picked some up outside. It really makes me wonder if they are trying to protect the perimeter of 
the coven wherever they're living by putting these stick dolls outside of the living area. That's just, that was my theory. It just feels like they would find them on the, the external perimeter. So I don't know. It's just, just a theory, just a theory. There's another scene where Jay is inside the little like blow up tent by himself. And he sees not only this thermo standing body once again on the landscape, but it causes the entire landscape to change colors. That is when I knew it was definitely something paranormal related. I have had that happen to me before where I've had the entire landscape. It happened inside of the Ferris mansion. If you guys want to go back and find that episode. And it, it, we were trying to get this child apparition to play with a ball. There had been a known child apparition that had been there. He was accidentally shot and killed inside of the residence. And this kid loved to play with like little toys. I really do think it was a child apparition. I don't think it was anything dark. And so this little kid, um, you know, we find this ball and he's been moving it. And all of a sudden the entire landscape lights up with like yellow, red, and orange. And there's no reason for a, a wooden staircase and wooden walls to light up with heat thermal like that. So I've seen it before. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me during an investigation. I felt like that was an amazing, compelling piece of evidence. And that locked the very first image that we saw, even though I was questioning it. But then when I saw that second one, I was like, yeah, they've definitely captured something paranormal. And it's a full freaking bodied apparition. There was a point, though that Zach said, what if it is a person and what if it's roaming externally, you know, around the camp or the coven and it's basically doing rituals to try to keep things out. And that really still made me nervous for them because of what I've gone through on outdoor investigations. So please let this be a lesson to you guys. Don't just get in a car and drive to an outdoor location, especially if it hasn't been secured by security, which if you're looking at a landscape like they were in that's you know, acres and acres of land, it's really impossible to get it fully cleared. So once again, my, my biggest rule for investigating is safety for the team and for myself has to always come first. So just be very, very careful when you have, you know, a circumstance where a coven could be there and they could get territorial and not only use spells, but possibly have guns and knives and be very dangerous, you don't know. So I'm just going to tell you guys, please be safe when you're doing your investigations. I felt so bad for Aaron getting locked in the church. Like he just, I think he felt really bad energy in there. They had like the shadow mist thing come up and like he just, he's like, you're lying on camera. Didn't he say that or something? Like, you know, you're lying in a church. He told Zach, you're lying in a church. And <laughs> I thought that was so funny because he just didn't want to be there. It, it tells you how you can feel the energy before you've even started to investigate. You don't even realize what's happening before it happens. And then as Aaron was in the church, he was actually investigating sitting by the cross. Did you guys notice that? Like it must have made him feel safer to sit by the cross. In a way, he was doing spiritual warfare without saying it. He really was. He was saying, I feel safe if I sit by something attached to the other side in a positive way and therefore I can investigate when I'm around that. I think Jay was filming Zach and he was walking like backwards. And not only did they first see the deer in the woods, um, which was like two eyes, and but then they're standing there and this deer just comes like walking out of nowhere. That was crazy, like how close it was. It wasn't afraid to be near them. It wasn't around them, you know, at a very far distance. It didn't run through to get away from them. So that also makes you think that there is a coven living in the woods. Are they possibly feeding the animals to make them feel safe to come around them? I'm not sure if they're using them for food or not, but it does. if it is a spiritual druid or a spiritual coven, there is a high chance that they could be about the animals and all this stuff. So I found it interesting that since the deer came so close, it seems like it wasn't afraid of humans and it's probably been around humans before. I got really freaked out when there was breathing on the walkie talkies. I've had that happen to me inside of the Bross Hotel that I did the investigation in. That is very strange when they can manipulate not only like killing batteries and, and cameras when we have that happen, but when they can tune in 
to your speaker system and turn it on and communicate with you, you know, that way. And then you hear this like heavy breathing. That's scary. Like you realize suddenly that the realms at that exact moment have literally like matched to a perfect cross and they have completely opened for you to be able to communicate directly. Those are the moments that make me love ghost hunting so much because it is undeniable of what just happened. The last thing they did capture was the ball of light that was kind of floating around in the forest. It reminded me of the very first documentary that Ghost Adventures did when they were with Nick and they were inside of that cemetery catching that blue floating ball of light, if you guys remember that. So I was just really interested to see that it was like a full circle. I, I believe in full circle things. So. I thought it was really great. So what did you guys think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you think that there were pieces missing that you would have liked to hear about more, like the ley lines? Don't worry, I will be doing more Ghost Adventures reviews because everyone's waiting for them. Make sure you guys enter in the giveaway. The giveaway is you have to give this video a thumbs up. You have to leave a comment below. You have to be subscribed to my channel. And next Thursday is when the giveaway ends. So let me just give you that date. So next Thursday is the 26th. So this giveaway will end the 26th. There will be another final giveaway for the month that will start the 27th and it will end on Halloween. So there will be early uploads next week for the sake of Halloween. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave comments below, follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time.